green screen going mad. It's like chopped off parts of my hair, which is lovely to see. Um, I need my glasses on. I've just realised I haven't had them on all morning and my eyes are feeling sore and strained, which isn't helping. Also, we've got this new uh, reed diffuser downstairs and every time I go downstairs my eyes go like, oh, so I think I'm slightly, slightly allergic to it or it's interfering. Anyway, that being said, we have the Premier League transfer roundup, part three of four. For the total clubs, obviously there will be a part five coming. I've changed it from the 5th of October to the 6th because the 5th of October will be a Road to Glory episode and then the 6th, obviously it ends on the 5th. The, uh, the, the deadline day is on the 5th. So on the 6th, then we'll have a roundup of everyone that I missed or is, is no longer in the... Or, uh, or transferred after I did their initial part. Let's finish that and let's get going. So we have, we have, we have. This is a big episode, guys. It's a big, big episode. We have three big teams in here. Liverpool to start us off. They have... Oh, what's gone up with the out, in and out? The levels on them. So this one is higher than that one. Apologies. You know what I mean? So, 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 so. Costas... Simicas, 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 Costas, Simicas has gone to Liverpool from Olympiacos for a total of 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11.75 million pounds, which is a very, very decent fee in football today. It's, a, it's an average fee. Um, he is, by all accounts, a backup, I think he's a backup left back, if I'm right, for uh, Robbo. Uh, a relatively decent fee. They've also signed Thiago Alcantara, who did play 45 minutes against Chelsea, did break a record for the most passes in the 45 minutes, looked absolutely sharp and an incredible, incredible player. So, an absolute steal for 20 million. And then a completely left field surprising option that I saw was Diego Jota going from Wolves for a total of 45 million now it's been estimated that the initial fee is only around four to five million with optional fee well not optional fees but mandatory fees at the end of the season or installments and then like you know any add-ons the initial argument was that they couldn't afford Werner for 39 and a half million but they could afford Diego Jota for 45 it took a few people by surprise also then people found out that it was a small fee at the start compared to a big fee. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not sure what to think about that. I'm not entirely sure how he fits in. I'm not entirely sure he wanted to go from a from a first team regular starter to a, to a backup option. They must have offered him a fairly, fairly lump sum of money a week for him to move from Wolves in my opinion. Um, but he is a good player at the end of the day. He's a very, very good player. Out of the club is Dejan Lovren. He's gone to Zenit for 10.9. We all knew that one. Uh, Adam Lallana, we've already discussed in an earlier episode, has moved on a free to Brighton. I think that's great for Brighton. Not so good for Liverpool. And then, uh, it, it's also corrected to however, I apologise, Kijan Hoover, or however, has gone to Wolves for 9 million, which I think is a very good sign for Wolves. Is a great youngster coming through. Made a couple of first team appearances for Liverpool. Um, and he's a fairly, fairly decent player. He's been on the radar for a couple of years now. Uh, so a net spend of 56.8 million. After Liverpool and Klopp's comments of, we don't go out and spend the money. We've bought small and created a team, which they have to a degree. Yet, yeah, still goes and splashes 60 million in a season. Seems a little bit counterproductive, but I don't counter. What's the word? Hypocritical. There they go. Uh, but I don't mind Liverpool. They've made some great signings. Uh, uh, Thiago is a huge signing. Diego Jota is an okay signing. And Tzimikas, uh, Tzimikas, sorry, uh, is, is a one that we'll see in the future. We'll have to see how that goes. Manchester City have done a good, good bit of business so far. They have let go of Leroy Sane for fifty-five million roundabout. And so. All in all, I think that's a great fee for someone like Philippe Rosane. Not, uh, wasn't getting the game time because he didn't really want to play. Made the big money move to Bayern Munich and is absolutely killing it at the minute. But that 
has allowed them to bring in a player of Ferran Torres, a huge potential. If you guys have played Football Manager, you'll know that he's a great player uh, from Valencia for £20.8 million. Pounds. I think all in all, that's a very decent fee. Nathan Ake from Bournemouth for £41 million. Now, I do rate Nathan Ake. I would have liked to have seen him back at Chelsea. However, I think £41 million for a relegated centre-back is a little bit expensive. I think £30 would have been a roundabout fee for me, where I thought, you know what, that is both good for Bournemouth and good for Man City. I actually do think that Bournemouth have got the better end of the deal here. However, however, that's not to say he won't do good. He might surprise me a little bit and actually perform 15 times better than I thought he could do, in which case 41 might seem like a bit of a steal. Pablo Moreno, I'm not entirely sure who he is, but he's signed from Juventus on an undisclosed fee. That one under the radar, he might be a, might be a youngster. I'm not entirely sure. And then a player that I've signed in my Leeds football manager career mode, Jan Quoto, from Cordoba for 5.5. I've actually signed him from Man City to Leeds on the game a couple of years down the line. Um, uh, as far as football manager, and I'm aware he's got a very, very decent potential. Uh, very young. And obviously going out of the club is David Silva on a free transfer to Real Sociedad. An absolute magician on the ball. Uh, a club hero. Gets his move back to Spain. Um, thoroughly deserved. You know, he, he, always, he always was going to let his contract come to an end at Man City and move on. Thoroughly deserved. Uh, they've released Claudio Bravo, which I think was a bit of a, bit of a tough one. And I think it's a bit of a shame because he was a good backup keeper. And then as we already know, Jack Harrison has gone to Leeds on loan, which is good for Leeds. I have also signed Jack Harrison on my Leeds career mode. I've made a few transfers from Leeds, uh, a few transfers on Football Manager, and it's come to life, you know, Quoto, Jack Harrison. And obviously, I, I think I'm doing okay this year with transfers and suggestions and things like that, because it's, it's coming to fruition more now than ever. You know, I mentioned the... Uh, what was the Watford one, Decore or Everton, something like that. I mentioned Wolves to pick up Fabio Silva and they've picked up Fabio Silva. I'm thoroughly impressed with sort of like how I've, how I've thinking things this year. Okay, sorry about that little jump cut. I've got a bacon cup. I'm going to have to eat that in a little while. So, moving forward, I'm not entirely sure where we got to, but yeah, I think personally I've done really well with a few transfers this season, more so than the previous season's videos. Uh, but anyway, moving on to Man United, I think they had big, big futures, or big, big potential, this this transfer window, you know. They've brought through what I'd now consider a solid first 11. I think De Gea had a bit of a rough season. I think he may still have a rough season. He might have hit that point in his career where things are starting to get to him a little bit. But now they've got Dean Henderson back. There is a huge, huge potential there to to, to bump above De Gea and really put in the performance for him. wan is great between Luke Shaw and Williams. Very, very solid. Uh, Maguire is not too bad. He hasn't done too bad. Uh, Lindelof's been very consistent. Uh, in the midfield, they've just signed Donny van der Beek, which is the one area I would have suggested was the poor area. You know, they had Matic terrible nowadays like he was okay at Chelsea he even dropped off at Chelsea in my eyes he wasn't too brilliant towards the end and then they signed him and I was like mm. uh, but now they've got Donny van der Beek at 39 million I think he's a bit of a steal he's been on a lot of teams radars for a number of seasons now him like a lot of the Netherlands players or the Dutch players that come from the Dutch league a lot of them have this sort of era of confidence about them you know Ziyech is good you've had has just signed. You've got a uh, delict when he went to Juventus. Uh, Van der Beek himself, huge, huge players in my eyes that are very, very good players. So I think forty million is a very, I th I'd put that at a perfect amount of money. You know, it's forty million. It's not seventy, eighty million for a player. At the same time, it's not a bargain. It like fifteen to twenty million, thirty nine million is a roundabout fee that's good, and it strengthens the area that they specifically need. And obviously, we saw his performance the other day. He was a very good player. Um, Pogba in the midfield, along with Bruno Fernandes, incredible. Rashford, Martial and Greenwood, three very good players up top. 
so I thought, you know what, they need depth now, that's what they need, they need depth and maybe one or two other big, big signings just to boost a little bit. And they haven't really done that, they've, they've, they've missed, they're, well, they're missing out on Jaden Sancho, which is a bit of a shame. Um, by the looks of things, I doubt they'll come in this transfer window now, I think. Uh, Borussia Dortmund are, are demanding a bit too much of a high fee for him, in my eyes anyway. So it's it's good it is good business for Man United not to spend that money on a player. But at the same time, they might need to. Um, they've brought Igalo back on another year loan uh, from Shanghai. Uh, he's not amazing, is he? He 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 was better than I thought when he played. To be fair to him, but he wasn't incredible. You know, he's he's not that incredible backup. You know, you look at Chelsea now. You've got Abraham, you've got Vernon, you've even got Giroud still, who's putting in great performances. You look at Man City, Jesus and Aguero, incredible. You look at Liverpool, you've got Firmino, but then you've got players like Origi that can come on. And now Diego Jota, if you must. And you look at Man United, you think you've got Martial up top. Who, who, who is good, don't get me wrong, he's been great. You've got Rashford that arguably can play striker, but his best position on the wing. Fair play. You've got Greenwood again. Can play that centre forward striker role, but Ollie's playing him more of a right winger. Who else have you got to cover them positions now? You've got Ariga. Uh, you've got Igalo. You've got Dan Dan James. It's not really the best of like, options, so they need to go in for a player like that anyway. Alexis Sanchez has gone to Inter Milan. That's that's another spelling mistake. My fault. Didn't even notice that Alexis Sanchez got to Inter Milan on a free transfer now. Initially, that might seem like a stupid getting rid of Alexis Sanchez on a free. That is the best bit of business Man United have ever, ever done in my eyes. Alexis Sanchez wasn't playing. They were still paying his wages while he was at Inter Milan on loan, which was the most stupid thing. It was up like 300, 400k a week, which is a stupid amount of money. And so, in the end, get rid of him. Let someone else pay his wages, get that off your budget and... You know, sign Donny van der Beek for 40 and pay him half the wages. It makes sense. Uh, surprisingly, Tahith Chong has gone to Werder Bremen on loan. I actually quite like Tahith Chong. I think he's putting some good performances in, like, the uh, FA Cup or the League Cup. And uh, some other, I think it was Europa League games last season or the season before. So I think fair play to the lad. Get some game time. Get some first team game time away. One that did surprise me, Angel Gomez, has had this... This potential around him, this air around him that says, you know, he could be incredible. He could be very good. You know, he's got the potential to be to be incredible. Didn't quite make the first team on many occasions. You know, the likes of Pogba, Bruno Fernandes coming through. On the wing, you've got the likes of Rashford and anyone. So he wasn't really going to get the game time anyway. But they've let him go to Lille on a free. <laughs> it seems a bit strange that they didn't want to, like, renew his contract and send him out on loan for a few seasons. He's still young very young and they just let him go on a free that's a really bad bit of business in my eyes unless obviously they know more than we know about the player he might actually be a bit shit we never know it seems a bit strange for me though and then Joel Pereira has gone to Huddersfield on loan again I think that's good for Pereira you know with them strengthening the midfield this season he probably wasn't going to get the most game time if any at all and if I'm being honest he didn't really look like the best player for Man United uh, and so, going out to Huddersfield on loan, getting that game time, A, to prove himself for when he comes back to Man United, or to build a new relationship with a new club that he can maybe go to on a permanent transfer. That's on sort of his level. It's, it's, it's a good transfer. So, not a lot of business done by Man United, but a net spend of £39 million is good nonetheless. Next, we have no, 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 Newcastle. Uh, they have brought in Jeff Hendrick from Burnley on a free transfer. Good bit of business. Jeff Hendrick's a decent player. They have signed Ryan Fraser from Bournemouth on a free transfer. An incredible winger. It was good two or three seasons ago. Has had a few inconsistent performances for Bournemouth, which led to them getting relegated. But a good player, a Premier League player nonetheless. They have signed Callum Wilson for £20 million from Bournemouth. I assume that might have been a relegation release clause, something like that. Uh, so again, a very, very good player. Uh, a good Premier League player, you know, he scores goals year in, year out. And that's what Newcastle did lack. They signed Joe Ellerton, who only scored but one goal or two goals all season. 
So a, a proper Premier League goal scorer is what they needed, and that's what they've got. And I think he's already scored, if I'm if I'm correct in saying so. And then they've signed a Jamal Lewis, a right back again, another area where they've lacked in recent years. Uh, from Norwich, is he a right back or is he a left back? Anyway, I think he's a defender. Or I could be thinking of the wrong player. Anyway. So a wing back nonetheless. Um from Norwich for 14.85 million, which I think is a bit of a steal. But then again, Norwich were relegated again. So a net spend of only 34.85 million for four decent Premier League players, I think is a really good deal. Again, not incredible because we're not expecting mountains of moves by Newcastle. Uh, they've only let three players go. I think they might have actually let more players, but most of them are, I, I don't know, so I only put three on them in the top of the list. Jake Turner's gone to Morecambe on loan, Tom Allen's gone to Accrington on loan, and Kel Watts has gone to Plymouth on loan. Don't know who any of those are. Wish them all the best. Last but not least, we have Sheffield, 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 Sheffield United. Aaron Ramsdale has come in to replace Dean Anderson. There we go. Because um, obviously he's come back to Man United, signed a new contract with those, so Sheffield needed a new keeper. Aaron Ramsdale from Bournemouth on 18.5 million. I think that's a fair estimate. A decent keeper. They have signed Ethan Ampadu on loan from Chelsea. I'm a big fan of Ampadu, and I think that this may be the last season we see of Ampadu. Because he's either going to come back to Chelsea and go straight into our squad next season, or I, I think that's his last chance. And I like him. I think he's a great, great player. And I think Sheffield have got a brilliant, brilliant defender on loan. Slash CDM, because he can play CDM anyway. And I think he's a very good midfielder. Very, very versatile player, which is surprising for me, because Lampard seems to be liking the versatile players. You know, Werner that can play up front and on the wing. Havertz that can play in the middle, in centre mid, or on the wing. Mount can do, you know, a lot of things as well. It surprised me that we've let Ampadu go out alone, especially with the lack of defenders at the minute, or good defenders anyway. So, a bit of a shame, but again, if he performs at Sheffield, he's either going to come straight to the Chelsea squad, or we're going to let him go. I think at the end of this season, if he, if, if Chelsea don't want him, then he's gone. Anyway, Jaden Bogle on an undisclosed fee from Derby County. Great signing, Bogle an up and coming. Is Bogle the wing back? He's a left back, isn't he? If I'm right. Uh, and then Max Lau, I think, another defender. I'm not entirely sure on Max Lau, both from Derby on undisclosed fees. Uh, two very good signings, as far as I'm aware. Um, from a lot of my mates talking, they're both very good players, or very good up-and-coming players. And both both are going to be missed by Derby, which is a good sign for Forrest. Although Forrest are doing shite at the minute. Uh, and then last but not least is Oliver Burke. From West Brom, this is the strangest deal I've ever seen. Because for the first time ever, as far as I'm aware, they've just done a complete player swap. Like on the website, it literally just said Oliver Burke has come from West Brom in a swap deal with Callum Robinson. So Callum Robinson has left the club. I haven't put him on the out section because I'd just be writing the same thing twice. Um, just, just a swap deal with Callum Robinson. So Callum Robinson's gone out of the club. Oliver Burke's come in. Fair play to Sheffield. Um, and out the club, Luke Freeman's gone to Nottingham Forest on a loan deal. And Mark Duffy's left to Fleetwood on a free transfer. Not a lot of in and out, to be fair. But in my eyes, they've strengthened very well. Now, they could have second season syndrome, which is what we're starting to see with Sheffield. Um, they haven't really done too brilliantly at the start of the season. However, I, have, I am hopeful that they're going to stay up. I do like Sheffield. They've got a good bunch of players now. It was just Dean Henderson's a lot better than Sheffield United is. I think he kept them in it quite a lot last season, so you never know. That's going to bring us to the end of this 